Hello my friends! I'm super happy to tell you that from today I will have a new car. Well, actually two new cars. Because thanks to the collaboration with BMW, I will have the chance to drive for one year two cars. One is gonna be the daily car, which I'm gonna use for work, for traveling, obviously due to the size and to the amount of things that you can load. While the other one will be the car for fun. I'm talking about two wonderful top-class cars and I truly can't wait to show them to you. So today I'm gonna show you the first one of them, the daily car. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the BMW M235i. talking about we're talking about the Grand Coupe Serie 2 which is a sport coupe four doors and we're talking about a sport young extrovert car so let's discover together this wonderful car let's talk about the first things that comes to your eyes which is the design the design is modern and for BMW the idea of modern is a usage of just a few precise lines not continuous because as you can see there is one here one down here which goes up which create a pretty cool shadow light effect then we have the LED lights which have this typical angel eye design which are stock you can find them in every version of the car we have the typical BMW front which has this super cool mesh effect which makes it look like three-dimensional then you have all these kind of spoilers and small details which are designed for the airflow which for me are also an important design element because they make the car look super racing then we have the rear which is very aggressive two exhausts the air ducts here for the brakes and you have this black line which connects the lights this is not a light it is just a design element and obviously we couldn't miss the rear spoiler which is not just for design but it's also meant for the aerodynamics another super cool thing about the design which i love really not only on cars but also on lifestyle for example when you see a girl going out with the shoes that match the color of the bag well this is the same here because you have this wonderful gray which contours the grid which is the same gray that you have here in this brakes airflow intake and in the mirrors so let's talk about the technical features exactly like the Siri one which has different version and different engines you also have different kinds of transmissions because you have the front wheel drive and the four wheel drive this one the M235i which is the top class is four wheel drive with a 2000 cc turbo engine which gives you 225 kilowatts or 305 horsepower and 450 newton meters of maximum torque which allows you to go from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 4.9 seconds okay now that we've seen how the car looks from the outside let's see the inside and one super cool thing that I want to show you is the way that you open the car because you either use the key which you actually don't use because you just put it in the pocket and when you get close to the car you can open the car and look at this how do you close the car you just close the door and simply touch here with the finger and the car closes obviously you need to have the key in the pocket and another super cool way to open the car is with the smartphone you can install an app configure it to match it with the car and open the car with the smartphone and that's something that I love because you just need to bring the key with you and you can forget about the key you don't use it you just need to keep it so now the first thing that I need to do is to turn on the car, to turn on the AC. Oh my god, it's July, I'm recording this video at noon in Milano. You can't imagine how hot it is. Come on. Let's do something clever. Considering that there is some shadow, let's go under the shadow. Voila! 
So how is this car inside? The first thing you see are the seats, which are amazing. I'm talking about the M Sport seats and they are super comfortable, super, I mean, you, you fit perfectly in them, which are controllable by the, the, the switches on the side and you can move them electronically and they are super cool. Then the cool thing that you immediately see are the displays. Then if you get in the car at night, the first thing you see, apart from the displays, is the lightning system, which is completely customizable in colors, intensity, and all that stuff. Then, of course, you see the displays. In the standard version, you have the 8.8 inches central display, while you have the analogic and digital dashboard. While in this version, which is the top class, you have the BMW Live Cockpit Professional, which is the completely digital dashboard and the 10.25 inches central display, which has an enormous amount of functionalities. You have the navigator, which has an integrated SIM card connected to the internet. So you don't need to use the smartphone to connect it to the internet, but it's already connected. It has installed Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and one super cool thing that it has, I'm gonna say it in Italian because it's configured in Italian. Ciao BMW. Ciao, come posso essere utile? Naviga verso aeroporto Linate. Ho trovato più destinazioni. Uno. D'accordo. La nostra prossima destinazione è Milano che Linate. Che figata. <ride> e poi puoi dirgli tantissime cose. Spegni aria condizionata. Ho disattivato il climatizzatore. Ciao BMW. Ciao BMW. Ciao BMW. Spegni la macchina. Accendi aria condizionata. Ho attivato il climatizzatore. And one super cool thing is that you can assign a custom name that you want. So instead of saying ciao BMW, you can say ciao Jessica, ciao Jennifer, ciao Francesca, ciao Superbike, ciao Squirrel. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. And that's amazing. Another super cool thing is this. You have the roof, which is not just panoramic, but it can also be opened. And this is a super cool thing for summer. Another super cool thing that I love is that the display is touch, which is very, very, very useful because it's much easier to touch instead of using the mouse, which is here that you can use to, to control all the functionalities. Here you have all the switches to control the air conditioning, the radio, you have this lever to control the gears or reverse or neutral or park. And then the, these three switches to choose the driving mode. On the steering wheel, then you have all the controls to set the cruise control, the speed, the distancing from the other cars, or the radio, the phone calls, and all that stuff. The audio system is from Harman Kardon, which is amazing, really. The quality is top. The driving position is very comfortable. One thing that I love is that you can rest your arms while driving. And for me, that I'm used to do very long trips, this is fundamental. Also, the passenger position is amazing. You have a super long space for the legs. You can rest your arms as well. <sighs> really, I could sleep for all the trip if I was the passenger. The car is designed for five people. So you have three places on the rear, two on the side and one in the middle. One super cool thing is that you have two USB-C ports here that you can use to charge your phone. Obviously, considering that this is a Grand Coupe car and not an SUV, which is low and not tall like an X6, the space on the rear is not that huge. So for example, for people very tall like me, you might be close to the limit with your head. Another super cool thing is the wireless charging system, which my phone has, and I didn't know it was equipped. So I, I find it out the first time I put it there, I saw it was charging and I said, okay, cool. <laughs> I have the wireless charger. I didn't know that. Now, if you've seen any car reviews from my Italian channel, you know that I always do the trunk test to see how big the trunk is, which consists in me going inside to see if I fit. Now, the trunk is uh, quite similar to the BMW 840D because being the car a coupe, you have the rear windshield that arrives until here. So you are limited in the height, but you have a very long space in depth. So I cannot fit inside here like this, but if I go in like this, I can fit all inside 
So it's not meant to put the baggages like this, but like that. Another thing that I noticed the first time that I opened the car, I'm talking about the design, it's look at this. Look at the side window. You don't have the frame around the window like most of the cars. See, it's just the glass, nothing more. So, as we mentioned before, this car is keyless, so you just need to push the start engine button in order to turn it on. Of course, the gearbox is, is automatic, but you can also switch to manual. And in order to switch to manual, it's pretty simple. You just need to press the upshift or the downshift lever, so you enter the manual mode. What's pretty cool, something that I love, is that a pedal shift follow the steering wheel. One thing that I never understand is why they put the fixed pedals so that when you're cornering and you're like this and you want to upshift, you can't because the upshift lever is here. And when you're like this and you want to upshift, you have to use the left hand, not the right hand. And when people say you're not supposed to upshift when you're cornering, it's people that never went on track because when you are on track, it happens that you are exiting a corner like this and you want to upshift to do some kind of short shifting or maybe shifting in the middle of the change of direction. The first thing that you want to know about this car is that you have three driving mode. You have Sport, Comfort and Eco Pro. Let's start talking about the Comfort which is the normal mode that you're going to use. I think this is the best thing you have between the Sport and the Eco Pro because the car is responsive. So when you want to accelerate, it accelerates, but it's not that aggressive as the sport mode. It's comfortable. So if you go on, the, on some holes or some bumps, the car feels great. It feels comfortable. It feels nice to drive, while the responsiveness of, of the controls is still great. What's incredible about these three driving modes is that it's like having three different cars. Because as soon as you switch to Eco Pro, which is the mode meant to reduce the fuel consumption, the car becomes incredibly gentle to drive. Guys, now I am at 50% throttle. And it feels like having 50 horsepower, okay? It feels like being on a not powerful car. It's like a safe mode, okay? But what's cool about this mode is that, let us assume that you wanna do a quick overtake and you push the full throttle, you get all the power available so you don't need to switch mode. In case of emergency, you just need to go full throttle. And you get all of it. And if you wanna always have all of it, you just need to go to sport and then full power always. What changes in sport is not just the power, it's also the, be the, be the general behavior of the car. Everything is much more responsive. Every time you push the gas, you get it immediately. Also, in sport mode, when you go on the bumps, the car is obviously less comfortable because the suspensions as well become stiffer. Ha. Every time you are on sport mode and you push it, you feel it, you feel the power. And it's super fun also that the upshifting is very quick. One really great thing that I noticed the first time that I drove the car it was evening, it had just rained, so the ground was wet, and there is a roundabout close to my house where every time it rains, understeer is the keyword. <laughs> Grip is zero. So that, that night, I took this car for the first time. I, I entered the roundabout without thinking about the wet ground, and I had no oversteer. And then I realized, oh my God, why didn't I get understeer? And that's because this car is equipped with a special system which is meant not to reduce the understeer, but to prevent the understeer. This is possible thanks to the performance control and the ARB, which is a technology installed stock in every version of this car. Basically, the ARB is not installed on the DSC ECU, but it's installed directly in the engine ECU. It means that it's 10 times faster than the previous versions. So this system, together with the performance control, act on the torque distribution in each wheel and on each brake separately in order to prevent the understeer. Obviously, another important feature that you have in this car is the park assist, which means that every time you're doing a maneuver, you've got the sensors all around the car 
that tells you how far you are from obstacle. You can also install the, the camera, which is not installed on this car in specific, but it's an optional that you can put. Another thing that I love is the head-up display, which is that display that is projected on the windshield, which is something that I love because you can see not only the speed and the speed limits, but also the navigator and the information about phone calls, voice assistance, and all that stuff. Another feature which is not installed on this car, but it's available as optional, is the reverse assistance, which means that if you go below 30 kilometers per hour and then you stop and you go in reverse, the car will drive automatically. It will steer automatically to avoid the obstacle. You just need to accelerate and brake because the car will remember the last 50 meters that you made. And that's super cool, really. Then you've got all those very important features like the automatic braking assistance system, the lane assist, the radar, which can control the distance between you and the other cars and allows you to automatically adapt the speed of the cruise control according to the speed of the cars in front of you. Then, considering that we're talking about an M performance car with the sport mode, what happens when you switch to sport mode is that the sounds as well change because you saw that we have two exhausts. Normally the right one is open and the left one is cl closed by that valve. So when you switch to sport, that valve opens, making the exhaust louder. That car is truly amazing. Talking about the price here in Italy, the standard version starts from 34,000 euros, while the M235i starts from 53,500 euros. And this price difference is mainly due because the M version includes stock, many things that are optional on the standard version. So I'm super happy about this car. And now I invite you to write a comment below and try to guess which car is the second car? Let me know in the comments what you think. I hope you like this video. I hope you like this car. And don't forget to subscribe because in a few weeks is coming out the video of the second car. Goodbye everyone. And thank you BMW for these two amazing cars.